again here today, every Thursday at four o'clock. I'm gonna try and come to you live unless I'm traveling, but even when I'm traveling, I may even still come to you live because there's always a lot of fun stuff going on. I've been watching the uh, chat room here and it looks like you guys are definitely around and that's great. We have some questions already going on there. I think there's a little argument brewing about reptile instincts and so on. And let me help you out a little bit, everybody. Um, your pet turtle, that is at home, that is doing its thing, um, will revert to the wild, no problem. Uh, if you take a red-eared slider that's been tank raised its entire life and you put him in a pond, you'd figure out how to be a turtle again. Turtles just have their instincts in them. There isn't uh, a lot in the way of a maternal transfer of knowledge. Um, those animals learn as they go. Uh, so there you have it. Now today we're going to be talking about a specific species of turtle, the Matamata, which is a very peculiar and strange animal. So we'll get to that one in just a little bit, but I thought, hey man, maybe uh, we'll answer some questions here. Uh, let's see, uh, I don't know, did I scare someone? I'm sorry about that, dude. Can a pet turtle have uh, a minor current in its tank? Yeah, that depends, Nicholas. Uh, good question. Sometimes the filter uh, output will create a lot of current. Uh, depending on the species, uh, some animals live in a riverine environment, like your map turtles, uh, you know, some of the, the river cooters and so on, and they're used to swimming in more of a current. Also, diamondback terrapins have to fight against the tidal forces of the estuaries and the brackish waters that they live in, so they're powerful swimmers as well. You just want to make sure that the current isn't too strong, that it will pin the animal against something and keep it from getting uh, a breath of air, or if the babies aren't quite strong enough, I'd want to kind of adjust the output on your uh, good old uh, filter. I like to use the uh, ZooMed Turtle Power filters, really awesome filter, as well as Fluval canister filters, really good stuff. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh yeah, George the Beast, you want Rhino Water Info? It's coming. Uh, make sure you tune in on Sunday because that's gonna be our bonus video. I was thinking about pulling them out now, but we got a nice bonus video shot, so gonna do that and then maybe next week during the live show if I have some time I'll pull out the baby and uh, we can get to him as well. Kyle Santangelo, where can I find tortoises to adopt? Well if you are you know try your local humane society uh, you can also try local reptile rescue, wildlife sanctuaries, sometimes they get animals in that have no home and need a place. Uh, but that's what that would be my first bet right there. All right, let's see, who else do we got here? Any other questions out there? I don't know, maybe I'll just uh, get right to it. I think I got a bit of a sniffle, man. I apologize. All right, well, ah, let's pull him out. Let's do the mata mata, baby. Here he is. This guy, you saw him, he's just getting rid of a little water from both ends there actually. So here is the Mata Mata, really, really cool turtle, very bizarre. This one actually is a juvenile male and it came from the Memphis Zoo where it was actually dropped off by a, an elderly woman who, who had it as a pet. So that's kind of funny, you know, you wouldn't think that, um, you know, an older person would know what this is or, you know, want to have one as a pet, but she did, dropped it off the zoo and through the Turtle Survival Alliance, we got it here. Let's get you a close up, everybody. Let's see. All right, let's get that new camera going. Oh, my fingers are wet. My fingers are wet. Here we go. All right, there you go, everybody. So you can really get a nice sense uh, as to how peculiar this animal looks. And it is a fully aquatic turtle. But the funny thing about them is even though they're aquatic, they're actually very poor swimmers. So this is a, a turtle you would not want to have too much of a current in their enclosure because they are just not good swimmers at all. Oh my goodness. So he's just spitting up some water on me. But uh, they are really interesting. What they do is they actually just crawl along the bottom of their aquatic environment. Um, and so they crawl along the bottom. If I've even heard of keepers who have drowned these animals because they just don't have a proper um, sloping side to their enclosure. If the enclosure is too abrupt, too steep, these guys will tire out trying to, to get out of one of the corners and they can drown. Uh, 
So that's a problem. You definitely don't want that to happen. Now, this is a juvenile. There are actually much larger individuals than this. Um, this is the one I have, but uh, some friends of mine have some rather large mata matas, and uh, they can get pretty big, close to 100 pounds. Um, very, very big animal. I'm going to put it right down here real quick. Have a look at this guy while I get while I get a little towel to wipe off my computer because I got some water on it, and that's not good. So basically, the mata mata guys, you know the deal. He looks just like he looks just like the ground uh, or the bottom of the pond or oxbow, which is just a little bit of a kind of an offshoot of a river. Uh, they live in slow moving swampy areas. Uh, a lot of bra not brackish water, but a lot of tannin rich water, which means uh, the water is a tea color and it's the tannins from all the trees and leaves that fall in it, as you can imagine in the rainforests of the Amazon. Uh, definitely a spot where they would encounter a lot of that. And I love this guy because not only is he very cool looking, but they, uh, you know, he, he's just chill. Um, so we got some questions. Let's see. All right, how big? I think I already asked, uh, answered that tall traveler. They get much larger than this. Uh, and the name Mata Mata, well, that's a good question. Where does the name Mata Mata come from? Um, offhand, it's an Indian name. Uh, I, I don't know exactly uh, the name, what, what it means. I, I remember, oh man, I'm really drawing a blank is what I'm trying to say. I remember reading it, but I forgot. But I'll tell you what, I'll answer that question afterwards, or you can do a Google search and maybe you can help me out. All right, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's got a pretty long neck. They're not, they're not that aggressive, Emery. Um, you know, if you put your finger near it while it's in the water, it's gonna accidentally uh, mistake you for a fish. Um, that is in fact how this animal basically is programmed. If something goes in front of its face and it thinks it's a fish, it, it, it moves so fast. It just opens its mouth so fast that it creates a vacuum-like effect, creating a low pressure area where it'll then suck food right into its large gaping throat. That mouth can open extremely wide. Now, they don't have a lot of power in their jaws, not like an alligator snapping turtle or a common snapping turtle or some of the loggerhead musk turtles. This turtle is basically just designed to open its mouth fast, suck in the food, and then it expels the water and swallows the fish or invertebrate or something that it actually got in. Uh, can they pull their head back? This is a side neck species of turtle. So let's see, they don't really pull their head. Oh, you don't like that. They don't really pull their head. Come on back over here, buddy. They don't really pull their head in like the uh, turtles in the Northern Hemisphere, but if I put it this way, you can see how it pulls its head in towards the side there. Um, Definitely not an animal, not the best way to protect itself, you see that? Um, but it still has that shell, and when it's burrowed into the mud, and the rest of its body is kind of mimicking the bottom of the, of the you know, waterway, the shell definitely does a good job protecting it. And then let's look at that shell. You know, it's got some really raised scoots. Uh, this isn't pyramiding. This is actually how this animal is, uh, you know, adapted to look. Uh, looks just like a rock or it looks like a log, and it does a good job doing that. It's really cool. Uh, they'll lay motionless for hours, hours just waiting for something. And uh, it's just really, really cool to, to see them get really fast for that split second. Uh, we're definitely, you know, Tom and I are definitely going to do some really fun videos with our GoPros where we're going to get some underwater footage of these guys eating real soon. So that'll be exciting. We'll post that up as a bonus video because I know a lot of you guys want to check that out. Um, do I plan on breeding the Mata Mata in the future? Not really. Um, if I get a female down the road and it happens, that's great. Um, uh, there's one guy that I was a friend who was a mentor to me, Bill Ninesling, and he actually was able to breed Mata Mata's captive bred. Most of the times you'll see babies that are imported. Um, they, they're kind of tough to acclimate, as you can imagine, having been transferred or transported all the way from South America. Um, they like to eat you know, live fish, and for some people that can be difficult. But um, they are really cool. You know, uh, The other interesting thing, um, and this is not, this is just from observations from the gentleman whom I've met who has bred these, um, what tends to happen is in order to get the eggs to hatch, 
they need to be submerged for a little bit. Um, there's definitely some kind of diapause. Now, diapause happens in different turtle and tortoise eggs where the development of that egg has stopped, be it because of uh, temperature, humidity. Basically, it's an evolutionary um, kind of adaptation for the egg to kind of weather out harsh uh, climates. So say if you're a western swamp turtle from uh, Australia and your egg gets laid in the dry season, it won't start to develop until the humidity rises and then that embryo knows to develop and it'll develop quickly so that it's, it comes out and hatches at the best point for its survival. Similar with the Mata Mata. Mata Matas will, um, their, their eggs need to be inundated with water for a little bit and then as it dries out, they know to hatch and crawl into the water. So it's pretty interesting stuff. Um, you know, and that also happens with fly river turtles, except the opposite. Fly river turtle gets laid in the dry season as the water levels raise, being that that's a completely aquatic animal. Uh, the water levels raise and the baby hatches as soon as it's inundated with water. So there, there's a little stuff. Uh, there you go, is it aggressive inside or outside the water? I wouldn't say it's aggressive, and I wouldn't say snappers are aggressive, actually, guys. Um, is an animal being aggressive if it's being picked up and moved around? I think it's being more defensive because they're frightened of us. Um, this animal has not tried to do anything to me. You can see he's, he's opening up. I'm touching him here and I'm staring at his face, but he has not made any attempt to bite me. Uh, when I first go to pick him up from the water from his tank outside, he does tend to give a quick pop with his mouth. But a natural predator certainly does, especially his offspring, babies. Uh, you know, different birds of prey, fish will eat them, small, you know, crocodilians will eat them. Uh, when they get larger, you know, you're looking at larger prey like jaguar will definitely eat these. Uh, jaguar can, will even eat sea turtles. Um, when sea turtles come to nest uh, in certain parts of the jaguar's range, like Costa Rica, the jaguar will come down and kill the female sea turtle as it's nesting. Same thing in the Amazon with the Mata Mata. Uh, larger crocodilians like black caiman uh, can definitely crush their shells. So yeah, definitely. Um, very cool. Yeah, Mike, uh, Mata Mata hatchlings did come in a lot with tropical fish shipments. Uh, still, from time to time, you can see that. But, you know, always, guys, uh, it's always best to get a captive raised animal. Uh, it's very cool, man. Uh, this guy right here is only about six years old. So it's it's a young Mata Mata. It's not a full-grown one. They can get close to 100 pounds, sometimes in excess. Uh, but that's a very, very rare case. Um, you know, a friend of mine, Chris Hagen from the Turtles of Auto Alliance, will do castings of large turtle shells. And he had some pretty darn big casts of Mata Mata shells, which are way impressive. These are big animals. Um, you know, and... Guys, you also have to think about it. So many of the large animals have been fished out. Um, so in, in essence, we're kind of dwarfing the population. I mean, they are reproductive at this size, but we really, you know, hundreds of years ago, imagine how big Mata Matas would have been before we were fishing them all out, all those big ones. Uh, let's see what other questions we got here. Uh, all right. Uh, what's the proper way to pick one up? Well, I treat them similar to a snapping turtle. Um, and with snappers or monomatas or any turtle that's kind of gives you, you know, the, the potential for you to get bit, you just grab along the top rim of the carapace and lift them up like this. And you can also then, if you can lift them up, you can support underneath their plastron like that. And you can see this is quite a long neck. So what this guy would also do is he'd be in a nice comfortable spot in shallow water and he'd be resting and then he might just stick his neck out similar to a soft shell or a snake neck turtle and basically he would just get a breath without having to really move and then he can get right back into that nice ambush position where he can get a nice fish uh hi kathy and uh let's see that's kathy Hyman wanted me to say hello uh they will eat crayfish and small crabs but um it have to be really small because as i mentioned they don't have a lot of power in those jaws so they're not really crushing them they are basically going to be a, um, they are basically going to be a, a fish eater. So what is it? Pescavorius uh, most of the time. Uh, and there's that. So, you know, the Mata Mata, really, really cool. Uh, 
turtle species. Um, here, I'm keeping in a large stock tank with about six inches of water. I go into my pond, I cast net out some little uh, tilapia and brim, and I put them in there a couple times a week, and he eats them on up. They don't need to eat a ton, similar to all chelonian or turtle and tortoise species. They